Now today's video will be quite different from all the others that we've done before. Um, you've become really flexible in the way that you can calculate with, with multiplication and division and I've seen all these different strategies and that's really great. Today though the focus is on actually on interpreting worded questions. Some of them look like you would need to multiply or divide but you actually don't need to and you've got to figure out which questions involve multiplication and which ones don't. So really good for developing reasoning and problem solving skills. Um, so looking forward to getting going on that. Again, keep sending the examples of the questions and the things that you do through for, for Friday. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the task that you're going to do today. It's quite an unusual one that we get to at the end. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. Now to start off with today, we're actually going to have a little bit of a recap on some of the ratio work we've done. And you might be thinking, hang on a minute, I've got the wrong video here because Herbie is in year four. Well, let me tell you. I've actually, this, I've shared one of Herbie's examples here, and he's actually toned down some of the difficulty of some of his examples, which have just been unbelievable that have been coming through. So well done, Herbie, and thank you for, for this slightly softer version. Um, but I, I asked you to come up with some of your own questions based on this recipe. We're going to come to a lot of them on Friday, but we'll start with this one from Herbie now. Now, what I want you to do is two things. The first of all, find any answers that you can. And then the second thing is pause the video and rank the questions by difficulty as well. So maybe think, which one did you find easier? Which one did you find harder? And, and why was that? So have a go. OK, right, let's have a let's have a look. Um, now, Herbie has very helpfully provided some answers as well. To make, to make 75 cupcakes, how much sugar are we going to need? We, we always need to think about the relation between the number of cupcakes we need to make and this amount for the recipe. So what's the link between 75 and 25? It's going to be three lots of this recipe in terms of the amount of sugar that's needed. So um, we'll need 750 grams. It's three lots of 250 grams. Now, what about, uh, what about to make 35 cupcakes? Now, I found this quite a challenging one, and there's a few ways this could be done, but my favorite one is thinking, well, if this is how a, a recipe for 25 cupcakes, if I can work out how much I would need of each ingredient for five cupcakes, and then I can multiply that by seven, and that will be 35 cupcakes. Um, so this one, I find a really challenging example. Um, so if we, if we look at 300 grams of flour, if I divide that by five, that will give me the amount that I need for five cupcakes, which would be 60 grams. Um, so five cupcakes, 60 grams, seven lots of 60 grams, 420 grams. Oh, that was a challenging one. Um, well, what about this one? To make 250 cupcakes, what's the relation here? Um, we're going to need 10 lots of this, the quantities in the recipe. Um, so... 40 eggs, even though uh, obviously we're multiplying that by more, I found that much more straightforward than working out 35 cupcakes. And what about for 95 cupcakes? Well, I'll tell you what my strategy was here. I don't know what Herbie did here. Was I thought, I'm going to multiply this recipe by four. That will give me enough to make 100 cupcakes. And then I'll work out how much for five cupcakes again by dividing by five and just subtract that. So how much butter then? Well, I, if I go for 100 lots, uh, 100 cupcakes, I would need four lots of this recipe. Um, and then I would just need to subtract the, um, like the amount for five cupcakes. So 200 divided by five, I'll need to take off 40 grams. Um, and that is from 800 grams, 760 grams. Whew, again, another challenging one. And again, well done. It's, Herbie, brilliant, brilliant having you involved in these videos as well. Um, let's just have a little bit of a recap on yesterday as well. We were looking at ratio. Um, for every three children on the school trip, there is one adult. We had a look at this example and how um, the information given can be different. So there are 24 children on the trip. How many adults? Um, so have, uh, have a look at this. 24 children on the trip. How many adults? Well, each, um, each kind of group, if you like, must there be eight. So adults, well, there'll be eight adults. Um, well, what about this one? For every three children on the trip, there is one adult. There are 24 people on the trip. How many adults? Um, this time, we, we've got to recognise that the 24 is all the people. So how many adults will we have? Um, it would be six. E each box has a value of six there. 
So here's a slightly different version of the same question, and I wonder if you can find the mistake. So we're going to have a look at this question answered incorrectly, but can you spot the little mistake that's been made? For every five children on the school trip, there is one adult. There are 40 more children than adults on the trip. How many adults on the trip? So have a look at this for a, for a way of, of breaking this down. Um, there we go. So there I've positioned the ratio. Um, so five children for every adult. And then we've marked on the 40 children. Um, so that must be eight in each section. 40 divided by five equals eight. Um, so it must be eight adults, surely. Pause the video. What mistake's been made there? Can you see it? Okay, let's have a look. Um, well, the ratio is correct. It is, it is five to one. But the difference is key. It's this. It says there are 40 more children than adults on the trip. So 40 represents the number of extra children, not the number of children in total. Um, so that means, of course, there must actually be 10 adults on the trip. Now, the focus for today's video is, is this multiplication? We've got different kinds of word problems. And for you to interpret, does this involve multiplication or doesn't it? Now, there's actually been a lot of research that shows it's really important that you experience multiplication in different forms. And you can actually see when it's multiplication and when it isn't. It's often something that children find really difficult. And we're going to try and break that down today. So let's have a look at uh, this first example. Is this multiplication? Ben is five years old. Sam is nine years old. When Ben is 15, how old will Sam be? Pause the video. Multiplication or not? Okay, should we have a look? I'll see if I can put a drawing to this. So Ben is five. Sam is nine. So when Ben is 15, well, actually here, it'll just be the same difference. The, the ages will always stay uh, a, a gap of four years. And then essentially, we're just adding years to that so it, the gap stays the same as, as the children get older. So this one actually doesn't involve multiplication. You might have looked at this and just thought, well, 5 to 15 times by 3. Um, but actually what happens is we're adding 10 to both of the ages. Well, what about this one? Is this multiplication? Kara and Helen go swimming. They swim at the same speed. Kara starts before Helen. When Kara has done 6 lengths, Helen has done 2 lengths. When Kara has done 30 lengths, how many lengths will Helen have done? Hmm. Pause the video. Is this multiplication? Okay, again, I'm going to see if we can put a picture this, to that and have a look. Um, so, there. So, Kara has actually done four lengths before Helen even starts. Can you see that, that, that Kara starts first? Kara starts before Helen. So... The difference is four lengths. She's four lengths ahead. So when we get to this point where Kara's done six lengths and Helen's done two lengths, th this is the point we arrive at at the question. Now, because they swim at the same speed, this is another constant difference question. I just have to think, well, here, when Kara's done 30 lengths, that's another 24 lengths. So I'll also need to add the same number of lengths to Helen there. Um, so, so when we get 10 lengths, six lengths, um, and then in the end, we get 30 lengths and 26 lengths. Now, it's not multiplication. It would be if they were swimming at different speeds and we have to scale up. But actually, that when they're swimming at the same speed, it actually just involves addition and subtraction. OK, well, what about this one? Mr. Barnes has two pairs of trousers, three shirts and five ties. How many outfits can he wear? Hmm. Pause the video. Is this multiplication? OK, let's have a look. Um, and again, I like to put pictures to everything if I can. Um, let's say I had a pair of black trousers and a pair of grey trousers. Let's just think about the black trousers. With the black trousers, he could wear um, shirt one, shirt two or shirt three. And with, let's say, shirt one, there's five tie options. So here, black trousers, shirt one, five ties. There are five possible outfits and another five possible outfits with black trousers with shirt two. And black trousers, trousers shirt three five ties. So in total here, we have 15 possible outfits and another 15 possible outfits with the grey trousers. So actually here we are multiplying two by three by five. And this we'd call a combinations view of multiplication. Well, I think today's video is a really, really important one because it's so important to experience multiplication and division in different contexts and to actually be able to understand them. I think it's very challenging as well. Um, so to explore that, 
you've got task A. So is this multiplication? Ha have a look at these three questions and do they involve multiplication? And, and how do you know? Um, then there's a combinations task uh, underneath here for task B. So see if you can work out um, the, the answers there and, and how you know. But this is a very, very unusual, got a special task, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. Task C, Zoolander. Now, you need to click on this link. And when you click on this link, it's going to bring up something very special. Um, now, what you're going to have to do is think of how many ways the display can be arranged, and it'll make sense when you see the video. So you use Act 1 to get you started. Act 2 will give you a clue. You'll probably need that clue. And then the answer isn't below, but it's actually in Act 3, okay? So this is the work by uh, someone called Graham Fletcher, um, who is a Canadian. He put these videos together. These are not mine. And can you see it brings up this screen, Modeling Outfits, and click on Play, and your task is thinking how many possible combinations are there. And this is all going to make sense when you have a go. Now, I'm really, really excited to see how you're going to get on with Modeling Outfits. And again, the answer is in Act 3. It's all going to make sense, I hope, when you view those videos. And um, so again, you'll get onto there just by clicking on that link. Enjoy this one. And again, I'm going to be back tomorrow.